Good morning or afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this. This is um, based on section 7.6 in Calculus Early Transcendentals Edwards and Penny and the topic is trigonometric substitution. We'll start with a little humor. Doreen's morning coffee slowly grew chill in her trembling hand. They had returned. Rug circles. Well, let's hope we don't go around in circles with this method. But it may feel like that at times. Start with a simple looking algebraic integral, which unfortunately cannot be integrated by currently known methods. And then the idea here is what we're going to do is we're going to change the algebra into trigonometry and apply some identities to rearrange it. Okay, so the next step is change it into a horrible integral with trig functions because the first step makes it look worse. But the whole idea here is that we will be able to rearrange it now with, with identities and then end up being able to integrate it. So next step, use trig identities to completely rewrite the horribly messy integral. And it will probably still be pretty messy, although occasionally it comes out pretty sweet. And then have fun integrating it. And there's a couple of extra steps at the end that we'll look at in the examples. Three specific identities are utilized. 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. 1 plus tangent squared x equals secant squared x. And finally, secant squared x minus 1 equals tangent squared x, which is really just a rearrangement of the second one. And what you're going to be looking for in your original um, integral are things similar to 1 minus something squared, 1 plus something squared, or something squared minus 1. And then that tells you which of these you're going to use. Okay, so you use this method if all other methods fail and you see the following that can be changed into one of these um, trigonometric expressions. a squared minus b squared x squared, which would match the first identity, sort of. We'll talk about how to adjust it. a squared plus b squared x squared, which matches the second identity, again, with some adjustment. Or a squared x squared minus b squared, which matches the third identity, again, with some adjustment that I'll show you in the examples. So now let's look at some specific examples and I'll show you how this works. Here we have an expression a squared minus b squared x squared. So let's think about this. Would any other method work? You can't use u substitution because the baby would be negative 18x and that's simply not there. It's not a uh, candidate for partial fractions or integration by parts. So which identity do you see? Well, it's the minus the quantity squared. So it's 1 minus sine squared theta that we want to change to eventually. Well, and how do we get rid of the 4 and the 9? Well, um, in order to match it up, we'll fix the, the 1 first. We need to have a 1, not a 4. So we factor the 4 out. And then we want that to equal uh, the inside of the parentheses to equal 1 minus sine squared theta. So 9 fourths x squared has to equal sine squared. Now before you compute dx and d theta, let's take the positive square root of both sides. And that'll give us 3 halves x equals sine theta, which means that 3 halves dx equals cosine theta d theta. Now this is why it gets more complicated because we're replacing 3 halves dx with something with a trig identity, I mean a trig um, function in it. All right, so let's go ahead and replace dx with 2 thirds cosine theta d theta and then oh, we'll show you what else we're going to do. So we got 2 thirds cosine theta d theta and then in the denominator we, we still have the 4 we just factored it out we didn't get rid of it and 1 minus sine squared theta. Now you see how this is going to simplify? This one comes out really nicely. Now we can cancel the 2 with the square root of 4 so that helps a little bit and then we can replace 1 minus sine squared theta with cosine squared theta and um, this is a little bit tricky but we'll just assume that cosine is positive so if you if you had limits of integration you might have to jimmy that a little bit 
and so we get uh, one third cosine over cosine, which is just one. Now, see, the thing is, if if we're negative, then the cosine in the that goes with the d theta would also be negative, and so either way, it's going to cancel out. So we kind of skim over that plus or minus thing, which. Um, just to make things convenient. Just assume everything is positive. And then if you get limits of integration, you, you can worry about that later. Okay? So now we have one third theta plus c, but we can't leave it in terms of theta. This is the little extra stuff I was talking about. We got to go back to x. So what does theta equal? Okay, so look over there at the three halves x equals sine theta. How do we solve for theta? Well, we just take sine inverse of both sides. And so we get one third sine inverse of three halves x plus c. Okay, that one wasn't so bad. Didn't get too horrible, but some of them get uh, much more complicated. So let's look at another example. Okay, what do you see? Which which identity do you think we're going to use? Well, it's plus, so it's one plus tangent squared. So let's fix the twenty-five first by factoring it out, and then we want sixteen over twenty-five x squared to equal tangent squared. Take the square root and then compute dx. So dx is going to be 5 fourths secant squared d theta. And now we can substitute. Secant squared theta d theta for dx. The 25 is still there. The 16 over 25x squared becomes tangent squared. And the 3 halves is still there. Now we can't cancel the 5 and the 25 directly this time because uh, if we uh, take the square root of 25 and then cube it, that would be 125. But we can uh, go ahead and reduce those. And um, I didn't show all that arithmetic. Surely you can, you can deal with that. And then, of course, change the 1 plus tangent squared to secant squared. Now, again, um, don't worry about plus or minus with these. They always work out unless you have limits of integration. All right, so we can go ahead and simplify that. And that becomes cosine theta. And again, this one's not so messy. Antiderivative cosine is sine. And now we go back up and we got a little bit of a problem because we know what tangent is, tangent is, but we don't know what sine theta is. So what we do is we use a triangle. And we know that tangent is 4x over 5. So we set it up so we got theta in the right hand bottom corner and 4x uh, for the opposite side and 5 for the um, adjacent side. And then for sine, we're going to need the hypotenuse. So you use Pythagorean theorem. And the hypotenuse is, ooh, we've seen that before, haven't we? That's not a coincidence. Square root of 25 plus 16x squared. And so sine, then, is just the opposite um, 4x over the hypotenuse. And then that can be simplified a teensy by um, factoring out a 4. And there's our final answer. So that one got a little messy, but still not too bad. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, what do you see this time? It's a quantity squared minus something. So we're going to use secant squared minus 1. And again, we've got to fix the 1 first. So we factor the 25 out. And so secant squared has to equal 1 25th x squared. Take the square root, positive square root of both sides. And again, don't worry about plus or minus. Um, it actually works out because if x is negative, then secant will be negative. If x is positive, secant will be positive, and so on. But occasionally there is a problem when you have uh, limits of integration. You, you have to pay attention to those uh, taking the square root of, a, of a something squared is not necessarily always positive. But in the general form, uh, we just sort of uh, ignore that temporarily. All right, so then we've got 150x equals secant theta tan theta d theta. So dx is going to be 5 times secant theta tan theta d theta. So here's our new integral. Notice that we've got x squared on the outside, too, here, which we didn't have previously. And so you have to substitute 25 secant squared theta for x squared. And then under the radical, we factor out the 25. And now we can apply an identity. And then again, you know, if you wave your hands and just take the positive square root and as assume that um, tangent is positive, and that will cancel then. And so we end up with 1 over 25 secant theta which is 1 25th uh, cosine theta 
and the antiderivative is sine theta. Now again, we don't have sine theta in our little blue box up there, so we need a triangle. Secant is x over 5, uh, hypotenuse over adjacent. Use the Pythagorean theorem, and woo, look at there. That looks familiar, huh? All right, so sine then is just opposite over um, hypotenuse, and so it's the square root of x squared minus 25 over x plus c, and that's basically all we can do. Okay, so now I haven't shown you any really difficult ones yet, you know. Um, I'm just trying to show you ones that are easy to follow and will fit on the screen. But they don't get scared if the homework, some of the homework problems get messy in the middle. Okay, here's another example. But don't get fooled. Don't be fooled because you don't really need trig sub for this one. What can we do instead? The powerful u sub works because u equals x squared plus 25. We have a 2x for the du replacement. Uh, okay, so there's an extra x squared. That's not a problem. So then if we um, move the, the 2 over, we can replace x dx with a half du. And that ex extra x squared in the numerator, what are we going to do with that? Well, x squared is just um, u minus 25, right? So we replace x squared with u minus 25. We replace the x dx with a half du. And now we're almost good to go. All we got to do is distribute that um, square root of u um, across the numerator and change it to exponential form. And then we have an easy antiderivative. And then you can replace u with x squared plus 25. And then sometimes they'll, they'll simplify this. Uh, by factoring out a two-thirds x squared plus 25 to the one-half, you can end up with this. I'll let you do the algebra on your own. And so then that simplifies, and there's our final answer. Notice that the two-thirds um, and the one-half becomes one-third, and notice that if you factor two-thirds out of 50, it becomes 75, because two-thirds times 75 is 50. Okay. And so now I leave you with some shapes you'll be studying in three dimensions in chapter 13. You'll be learning the equations in x, y, and z for various uh, quadratic shapes. And then in chapter 11, we're going to be studying vectors and curves in space. And so you'll be learning how to do that this quarter. Have fun. See you next time.